What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and Everton have um, just come off the back of a 5-0 defeat at Spurs. Um, it's really difficult really to, to sort of sum up that game because we were so bad. <laughs> um, I'd possibly argue that was certainly the worst I've seen us in 10 years um, we were shocking it was really weird because we started really positive on the front foot um, we were we were pressing from the front and it was working as in you know we were keeping the ball high up Spurs' pitch we were putting pressure on their back four every time say Sessegnon or Ben Davis or you know whoever Romero Whenever they were coming out wide to play that ball up the line, there was Coleman, there was Gordon, there was Calvert-Lewin sort of triangling and, and sort of closing off the gaps. Plus, literally, it took them 10 minutes to work out how to play through it. And that was that easy diagonal ball into midfield. Allen would be pressed, Decoray would be pressed, so there'd be that gap. And then they'd just play it to young min Son, who, because Coleman was so far up the pitch, he was exposed over and over again and and we we got done consistently we literally got done over and over again doing the same tactic ball in behind ball into the box ball in behind ball into the box midfield just pushed too far up okay so we play through them and again it's attack v defense and the amount of times in the first half we were left say 3v2 or 4v3 it was shocking because because Kenny would be on the left hand side up the pitch, Coleman would be up there, and it's essentially leaving leaving Michael Keane and Mason Holgate, who let's be honest, are championship footballers. There's there's no sugar coating it. And for that to consistently happen, for Young Min Son to pull the strings, for players like Harry Kane to drop so deep and to be able to completely dominate every single position he was in. Um he was he was sensational today, by the way, Harry Kane. But we made it really easy for him because of how poor we were. I mean, the first the first goal was shocking. We get done, we lose the ball, ball is played in behind to Young Min Son. Mason Holgate is is easily five yards too far forward from where he should be because again he's pressed forward. Michael Keane is completely the wrong side of Harry Kane. Ball comes across because Coleman's running in treacle while, while Young Min Son has got literally half of half of the White Hart Lane state, whatever it's called these days. He's literally got the whole left-hand side of the fucking pitch to deliver a ball, which he slams in. And Michael King, because he's the wrong side of his man, he has to, he has to go forward. But the goal's in front of him, so he smashes it in for an own goal. It was just appalling. The second goal, the second goal was was as bad. I mean, we we we're literally lunging in. You know, the ball get the ball gets broken up in the middle of the play, in the middle of the park. Kenny steps forward to lunge in. It's played in a triangle. It's then played inside. It's a Mason Holgate steps in. It's then played around Holgate, and he's essentially in one on one. He shoots at Pickford and he goes under Pickford, and again. You sit there and you're defending. You just sit there and think, how is, how can it be that bad? The third goal, the ball gets played through the middle because Alan and Decorve are pressing. They're too far up the pitch against the Spurs side who knew that we would do that. I mean, look at the team they started. They started utilising their pace with Ben Decor pulling deep. Or, or, or Hoiberg, and just pulling the strings, passing the ball forward, supplying the, the defence. So that meant that players like Ryan Sessegnon could literally have a, have that whole side to himself. Young Min Son could literally run left or right wherever he wanted because we, we allowed them that space. And the third goal was absolutely embarrassing. The ball gets played straight through the middle of the park. Kenny manages to keep him on. Michael King gets dominated in the air, literally just stands there getting dominated. It's a great ball, and and how he counts through, makes it three, three now. 36 minutes in. 
game's dead. You know, DeCore was trying, but his passing was poor. Donny van der Beek, I felt really sorry for him because he was he was trying to get the team to move. There was one point in the second half where he was genuinely, you could see his frustration at Richarlison, at Calvert-Lewin, at Gordon for not moving around him, not giving him those options. Poor. Because, essentially, how are we going to break down his teams if we're just static? So you've got you've got a playmaker in Donny van der Beek, who is a very capable footballer, who who has been a breath of fresh air probably in the Everton side. He's put himself about, and and hasn't been able to do what he wants to do, which is supply our strikers with the ball in in positive positions. We didn't have a shot on target tonight, not one, and and in the last three away games we've had one shot on target. So we are we are miles away from. Premier League safety from top championship teams. You know, if we play Fulham right now, they walk us. They absolutely walk us all over the park. We we just can't keep up. We just can't keep up. We've got this press. And although, trust me, I like the press, it just didn't work tonight. It, it was just the wrong team to do it against. And... um. That'll go down on the manager, and I'm going to make a point on Lampard in a minute, and it's not a dig at all. So don't I don't want people to think it's a dig, but he got it wrong tonight, Frank Lampard. He got it wrong. Um, Calvert Lewin, nowhere near the starting lineup. He should be nowhere near the starting lineup. He was he was shocking, and I know he's coming back from injury, and and he he seems to keep having these relapses, etc. But his first touch was woeful. His his distribution was poor. His strength holding the ball up was bad. Didn't win any headers. Um, there is no point Everton playing Calvert Lewin if he's literally nowhere near good enough. And and at this moment in time, he's not. Everton look much better playing with Charleston through the middle and having two wingers either side of him, i.e. a, a Gordon or. Whoever, it didn't really matter. But Calvert-Lewin just doesn't appear, in my opinion right now, to suit the Lampard system, or at least doesn't appear to work. It it just doesn't work. And that could be because his fitness, it could be about anything. But right now, Calvert-Lewin shouldn't be starting games of football because points are more important. And I appreciate Calvert-Lewin scored 20 goals last season. But he's nowhere near that striker. Like, he's literally nowhere near that level right now. And we need it right now. Because, trust me, with the run of games that we've got coming up after the next three, we have to have picked up nine points, in my opinion. That starts against Wolves on Sunday. Because if we don't, and we we don't go and beat Burnley, we don't beat Newcastle, we're relegated. Like, we're, we're done. So Everton need a gap now. And this gap... Seriously, in the next four weeks, needs to be about 10 points because the run of fixtures we've got ending with Arsenal away, we could go down. But there's no sugarcoating it. There's no, you know, where people say there's worse, there's worse three teams than me. I've had friend, friends texting me tonight saying to me there are three worse teams than Everton. There's probably six or seven, eight, nine, ten even on paper. But we're not playing on paper. We're playing on we're playing on eleven aside football pitches. We're, we're playing in front of thousands of fans that can see every week, and they can see that defensively Everton are not good enough, and attacking wise Everton aren't scoring enough goals. We scored twenty eight goals this season. That's not enough to keep you in the Premier League. Our away record is is the worst in the league. It, it Everton's away record is the worst ever in the Premier League. Like for us, we've got less points now than we've had any other season in the Premier League. And that includes the seasons where we stayed up on the last game of the season. Like, there is no sugarcoat in this. We are definitely one of the worst teams in the league. Doesn't matter whether we've got a game in hand over Burnley. Doesn't matter if we've got two against Leeds and one against Newcastle. All of this, it doesn't matter. Facts are, we are where we are because we're not good enough. doesn't matter whether you win the games or not. We've already lost to Watford once. We've already lost to Newton, to Norwich. 
you know, that would be six points. Six points. One of those was a home game. That would be six extra points. We wouldn't even necessarily be worried about relegation. It, it, we're just so far off it. Coleman's defending tonight was absolutely atrocious. His bum hole must be absolutely screaming at him because, again, it didn't work. That He was just, because he was so far forward, he just got punished every time. Um, the fourth goal, second half, played again straight through the middle of us, completely exposed our back four. Literally, this was in 40 seconds. Michael Keane's gone off at half-time, by the way. Not because of a, a concussion substitution, just because he was so shit. Like, Lampard pulled him at half-time. But on Branthwaite, who kept Young Son on side, albeit he has to close down his man, so he, I, I can't dig him out. But literally, the ball gets played straight across our box. And you've got no one going anywhere near the ball. Coleman tries, but he's going the wrong way and tries to slide tackle the ball. It's never going to get it. And Regulon just walks up at the back post and smashes it in. Makes it 4 0. <laughs> Sunday league team could play against Everton like that. <laughs> Shocking. Fifth, fifth goal. Ball straight over the top. Coleman again, nowhere near Harry Kane. Holgate doesn't have. Any idea to step back, step forward, do anything. Like, the ball's in midair. He doesn't make any attempt to go anywhere near him because he can see Coleman's in trouble. Kane volleys it home, makes it 5-0. And, and that that was the game. Everton didn't lay a glove on Spurs. Everton dominated possession in the first half and in the second half it completely reversed. But just not good enough. And a lot of it was down to the defending tonight. Absolutely. Um. But Frank Lampard got it wrong tonight. He got his tactics wrong tonight. And I'm certainly not digging him out. I've got all the time in the world for Frank Lampard. And and I think if he's given time, he will make Everton a better team. I actually have no doubt about that. I think what we've learned tonight is sometimes he makes mistakes, as does everyone in every walk of life. And in my opinion, tonight goes down on Frank, majorly, because... When he did make them substitutions, and we did go five at the back, we were much more compact. It was much more difficult for Spurs to back us down, and they couldn't. And yet, we had a couple of corners, we had a couple of opportunities ourselves coming forward. So, it just would have been a tighter game, and I think, away from home, that has to be the way we play. We have to be tighter away from home. We can't go to Newcastle, and Tottenham, and Southampton, and play wide open football because, if I'm not mistaken, we've conceded what is it, ten goals, nine goals, in those three games. We can't. We, it doesn't work at home with the crowd behind us. I think it's different. Absolutely, I think we should be pressing from the front. Should be aggressive. Should be putting them tackles in nice and firm. But away from home, it was it. It just doesn't work because it, it's the opposite. Their crowd gets more wild up. Their players get more into it and. You saw it tonight, Coleman got tore a new one. Michael Keane should never play for Everton Football Club again. <laughs> he, he just shouldn't. Mason Holgate was probably one point ahead of Michael Keane. And I mean, I'm giving Keane like a zero and I'm giving Holgate a one. Um, John Joe Kenny, I, I thought he worked really hard tonight, but I just thought he he lacked quality. Um, but there's no doubt he tried really hard. He... He put in a few tackles. He did make a couple of mistakes. But you, I can't hold that against him when he's captain on the other side. He's getting getting absolutely rinsed. An experienced centre-half who costs £30 million, by the way, he's getting done time and time again. Mason Holgate can't defend. His positioning is horrendous. And the ball's going under Jordan Pickford. So I can't, I can't dig out John Joe Kenny tonight. I, I just can't. I felt sorry for Richarlison because he, he tried to do things on the ball, but he hasn't got that step over, that um, that real sort of spark to sort of beat a man with quick feet or anything. He doesn't have that. He's a direct, quick player, and that's why he works well as a number nine, because he can go in running behind. He couldn't do that tonight. He couldn't do that tonight because Calvert-Lewin wasted that space. Donny van der Beek, as I said, I felt sorry for him. I felt like he tried all game. I felt like Decore and Allen all tried all game. But because we were playing in this style of play, I just think they were ineffective. And and that's just my opinion. Um, Gordon, again, he definitely tried. His distribution wasn't great tonight. He struggled to beat the first man. And when he did, 
often balls were just going into Larice's hands, which is going to cause them no problems. So that was poor. But all in all, I, we deserve to lose. I mean, we we comfortably deserve to lose. It's it's not even a a close comparison. We absolutely got battered. Um, and that's what's disappointing because I went into this game thinking, Do you know what, Everton can get a point here. Everton can get a point. I, I said it. I was, I was so up for it. You know, them fans have travelled 250 miles or whatever it is. They've been stuck on the M6 for most of the night, probably arrived late. To witness that, it's it's unacceptable. You know, if you're Farhad Mashiri, how can you accept that when Everton were, were, were bought, two seasons before that, we were fifth in the Premier League. The season before that, we were sixth. We finished 11th twice, but we had a team of Lukaku and, you know, a Barkley and a Morales and a Delefeu. And we just needed a manager who could who could set us up defensively at times. And, and we would have been a top six team. I'm convinced of it. But our team was brilliant. Well, it was very good. I look at this now and we deserve to be 17th. You know, we, we the, the stats don't lie. Everton picked up 10 points after four games and now we're here. Now we're here. It's ominous. It's ominous. If, if, you, if you was to say to me right now, where do you think Everton finish? I think it's 18th. I think Burnley have got more fight. And this manager at Leeds really changed Leeds that, the, the weekend. I know they didn't get the result, but they outplayed Leicester. At least they outplayed Leicester. Everton wouldn't lay a glove on Leicester. Everton wouldn't lay a glove on anyone at the minute. We've got a massive game against Wolves this Sunday because if Everton, if Everton can get three points at home, brilliant, great. But if we can't, we're no longer just looking at our fixtures. Like I no longer just look at Everton. I don't. The first teams I look at are Watford, a Burnley, a Norwich, a Leeds, Brentford. I don't look at Everton. I don't, you know, I just... And, you know, there'll be loads, there'll be loads of people that... You know, they'll, they'll take pops at me for saying, oh, you can't criticise Lampard, this is what he walked into. I'm not criticising Lampard, I'm not sitting here saying this is his team, because it's not, that's certainly not his back four. But he did set up wrong tonight, and all I want from Lampard is that he learns for that, because, look, if he's our manager in the Championship next season, I'll back him. And it, I, I, I will back a manager and a person who's got a winning mentality, because there's no way he would have enjoyed tonight. Um, and I hope he just holds his hands up. Whether he does it publicly or not, fine, no problem. But it is on him tonight. The, he set up wrong. But the players were awful. So it's just a, a bad co collaboration of both. And we got done 5-0 by Spurs. We've had some really bad results to Spurs over the years, the 6-2. That was the worst one. So, yeah, I... I don't have anything positive to say. I don't have anything positive to say. And, um, I, I, I think we're in real trouble. I think we're in real trouble. Um, I, I thought we'd been in trouble a few times, but secretly I've kind of sat here and thought, you know, there's been angry reactions where I've gone, oh, we're going down, you know. But I have secretly thought, yeah, we're going to stay out of it. I know Spurs are a top top side. I know they're a top six team, but that performance tonight was. There's there's championship teams that would do better performances than that. Any of the top six, Huddersfield, a second. They'd they'd do better than that. Fulham, Bournemouth. They'd all be better at Spurs than we were tonight. And and if if I'm comparing us to them. It's where we are. We are a championship side. And I think I think 
if we do stay up, it'll be Goodison. Um, I said that I've said that all season now. I think Everton probably need another five wins, and we're running out of games to do it. I've earmarked the games that I think we need to get a result, and and that is essentially the, the next three games plus a couple of others. Um. And I really don't trust us to. If I go through our games, I think Everton have to get a point or win Burnley. I think we have to beat Leicester. I think we have to beat Palace. I think we have to go to Watford and win. So there's 10 points in four games. We have to beat Watford, uh, Wolves on Sunday. And we have to beat Newcastle. On Thursday. Five wins, one draw. That's what keeps us up. Because we ain't going to beat Arsenal. We're not going to beat Leicester. We're not going to beat Chelsea. We're not going to beat Liverpool. And we're not going to beat Man United. We're not going to beat West Ham. So, the result, the games that we can win are Brentford at home. Newcastle at home. And even there, we're flying. I mean, i I mean that genuinely Newcastle could turn us over. Wolves at home, they could turn us over. Palace at home, Leicester at home, Watford away, Burnley away. They're the six games. The rest of them we lose. Sorry to be negative, but that is where we are. So guys, look, I'm leaving it there. Um thank you for for watching this. This was a little bit more constructive than normal because I felt like it was needed. Um, Everton got done down the flanks consistently through the middle of the park didn't win enough headers defensively Jordan Pickford um, it, certainly the, the second goal didn't cover himself in any glory Calvert-Lewin didn't do his job holding the ball up and um, I felt sorry for the fans most importantly the ones who travelled there and got stuck on the M6 and now we've got to sit there travelling back after that it's, it's a disgrace Everton are a disgrace so there you go. Guys, I'm leaving it there. Um, I'm not going to say keep smiling and up the toffees. I'm just going to say have a good night, maybe have a beer and a, and a glass of wine maybe because that wasn't good enough.